For 27 years, teams have traversed the globe to take on this monumental challenge. Grit, determination and passion combine as competitors strive to conquer this monstrous event. From gutter-lined street stages to isolated mountain ranges, this island takes no prisoners. However, for every failure, there is a success. It's only here the ultimate spoils are delivered, rewarding those who complete one of the last true challenges in the world of motorsport. Welcome to Target Tasmania 2018, the world's ultimate tarmac rally. This 27th edition sees 285 cars tackle a stunning 2,000 kilometre course, comprising 33 competitive stages over six gruelling days. While Target Tasmania is headlined by competitive categories, a large growth area for the event has been the tour, which gives the same opportunity to experience Targa's stunning closed roads at a more relaxed pace and without the need to invest in a dedicated race car. The event's got great history and only three years now to the 30th anniversary. And people are asking, where's the event going? I mean, the growth is still there. It continues to evolve. I mean, the, we can only take 300 cars given the road closure time that we've got. So 285 this year is great. Organically, more and more people are choosing to do tours. It's a tourism event. It's about bringing people to Tasmania and putting money into the economy. So some would say that Targa was always designed to be a touring event. Another great field this year, you know, Porsche, Ferrari, Lotus, Stoke local Shannon's all running customer-based tours and when you look at the pointy end of the field I think we've got great balance right now. Launceston's Country Club hosted the official start of Targa Tasmania 2018. The modern component of the event is headlined by the GT2 and GT4 categories. The GT2 fleet features two-wheel drive late model sports cars, including three Dodge Vipers and an array of Porsches, as well as BMWs, Lotuses, Mustangs and Corvettes. The four-wheel drive GT4 category features a number of rally-derived machines from Subaru and Mitsubishi, all kept honest by a raft of Nissans and Audis. Competitors immediately face three tests on day one. The first two stages, Howell and Kaina, are billed as a warm-up before the day's main focus, the Georgetown Street Stage. The blast through town has been a major draw card of Targa Tasmania since 1994, with fans lining the streets in anticipation. The Lotus of Targa Northwest GT2 winner Paul Stokel and new co-driver Erin Kelly was expected to excel on the streets and didn't disappoint, provisionally taking the top spot. Despite setting the fastest time in GT4, the Targa Northwest winning Subaru of Steve Glenny and Andy Sarandis couldn't topple the Lotus. Nor could 2016 Targa Tasmania GT2 winners Matt Close and Cameron Reeves in their Porsche. It was only when the defending champions Jason and John White took to the stage that the Lotus came under threat. A perfect run was enough, with the stage win handed to the Viper. It was probably the most fun that I've had around Georgetown. Trying to really get used to the left-hand drive. And trying to feed it round between the gutters is probably one of the hardest things you can do. We were even 50 millimetres of motion, so we <laughs> didn't want to get any closer. But the car was a bit nervous early on, and we, we had to make a last-minute change to sort of just settle the back of the car down, but through there it was awesome. We probably got caught a bit too low tyre pressures. We were slipping and sliding around the first sort of three or four k. But, but yeah, it's always a heat going through Georgetown, it's shop long past. One of Targa's most popular categories is early modern, featuring a wide range of cars produced between 1986 and 2007. The hopes of Targa Northwest early modern winners Tony Quinn and Kate Catford suffered a blow when mechanical issues hit their Porsche partway through the Georgetown stage. Adam Kaplan and Alicia Penny's BMW and the Subarus of Ben O'Connor and Stu Benson and John Mitchell and Josh Sutcliffe all pushed hard. But pipping the field by a single second was the father and son pairing of Liam and Larry Howarth. Just wanted to start off on the right foot. The car came into the groove pretty quickly. Navigation was spot on, so had a crack. It's going to be a pretty tight year. There's a lot of really quick cars and drivers. It's going to be a good challenge. GT Sports Trophy presents another interesting battle with a variety of cars featuring at the front of the 130 km per hour speed limited category. Around the streets, the crew to beat were veteran campaigners Jeff and Nerida Beeble in their Nissan GTR. So I don't know how he's got me to come here 25 years every year. He keeps saying, this is the last, this is the last, but there's something about Targa and Tassie, we've just grown to love. It was good, it was a lot better than the first two stages. They had a couple of little car niggles, but they sorted themselves out, it's just like blowing cobwebs out. A new initiative for Targa Tasmania is the return of the Rookie Rally, providing debutantes with additional support and a subsidised entry for their first taste of the full event. 
The grand prize for the outright rookie winner is free entry to Target Tasmania 2019. Taking the first step towards the prize was last year's GT Sports Trophy winner, Jeff Morton, with co-driver Steve Fisher. The fact that they opened up the rookie rally again this year and it's for the whole event, that's the next logical progression for me and it's going really well. Made a dream come true for me. Every day's a learning day, every stage we're getting a little bit better. And we're having the time of life, this is a lot of fun. Certainly up through the narrow bit on the paving here, we came pretty quick through there so it felt good. It allows us to have a chance at running a little bit quicker than some of the closed classes, so a bit of a thrill. I can't believe that we were actually allowed to do all this. It's such a well organised event, even though it's the first time here. They make you feel really welcome and part of the team. The second day of Targa Tasmania dawned to stunning weather as crews prepared to tackle six stages through the state's northern farmland. The early stages were a challenge for some, but most were looking forward to the Paluna and Mount Roland stages that represented the first true tests of Targa Tasmania 2018. The leading teams all jostled to eke out the smallest advantage in the opening stages. Paluna proved decisive though, the Whites winning their favourite stage by eight seconds. With the day ending Mount Roland stage cleaned by the Whites, along with Close and Reeves and Glennie and Sarandis, the Viper ended the day with a 16 second advantage over the Porsche, with the Subaru a further four seconds back in third. The competition's really tight at the top. You know, we've had some runs through some stages where we thought that we were well and truly safe on winning the stage and then found out that we've had time taken out of us and I think those guys are the same. So it's just interesting how the different cars and teams work. That's what I always love about Tarmac Rally, that I really think an ultimate power to wait that you need and then after that it's down to your teamwork and how well you are on your notes and how committed you are. To be mixing it with all this exotic stuff is brilliant. The Subi is hilarious to drive, it's so easy, it's fast for the corners, it stops like you wouldn't believe. We'll hang in there. The early modern ledger featured the Howarth GTR, Kaplan and Penny's BMW, and now the Evo of Guy and John Lilliman. But the drive of the day came from Sutcliffe and Mitchell, winning each stage to arrive in Launceston, an impressive seventh outright. It was unreal. Josh drove today. He's done really, really well. The car felt good, most importantly, and um, yeah, that's all running really well, so we're very happy. In GT Sports Trophy, issues plagued the Beebles, setting up a battle for the lead between Martin Dersmer and Richard Wadhams and Targa Northwest winners Richard Woodman and Marcus Tal. The Subaru headed into Mount Roland with a nine second lead, but pushed a little too hard. Gifting the Lotus a clear lead in the category. You know, we kept working hard all day, but uh, the guys that were coming first uh, kept getting a couple of seconds on every stage. So we're swapping times, very close, very tight at the point here. We're hoping that we'll see them for the rest of the week. Action intensified on the third day as the field tackled six stages on Tasmania's east coast. Up first was the day's flagship stage, the Sidling, a tight technical test that provides some of Targa's most intense challenges. Spectators arrived early, some even camping overnight in anticipation of the action to come. Teams rewarded the spectators' tenacity, putting on a show as they dug deep in an effort to gain any slight advantage. Amazingly, the Whites tied for the stage win with Glennie and Sarandis while Close and Reeves crossed the line only one second behind. The three cars in the tussle for outright honours have significantly different strengths and weaknesses. This straight line speed comparison shows how tightly matched the Viper and Porsche are, as well as the gap back to the Subaru. However, the Subaru makes up ground in other areas. Its suspension travel and four-wheel drive system are an advantage in the technical sections. Glennie carries more speed into the corner, holding the apex longer, while White apexes later, using the Viper's power to advantage with a quick exit to draw level with the Subaru. Over the course of the day, the Whites held their lead, but the Porsche of Close and Reeves sits a mere 19 seconds behind. Glennie and Sarandis remained in the mix, sitting 37 seconds behind the Viper. While not quite able to stick with the outright leaders, second place holders in GT4, Angus Kennard and Ian Wheeler, held a comfortable gap over the chasing GTR of Mark Balcom and Brian Foster. We're going pretty well. I think we pegged back three seconds on the nearest GTR in our class. So we're sitting second behind Steve. We really enjoy the East Coast and we had a really good run, especially over the last stage at Ross Arden. Having resolved their car issues, Quinn and Catford reappeared on the early modern leaderboard, winning the Elephant Pass stage. 
Out front, Mitchell and Sutcliffe still managed to gradually extend their lead over the day. Martin Dersmer and Richard Wadhams maintained their GT Sports Trophy lead, but one minute behind and chasing hard is the Subaru of Christian Downing and Clayton Webber. I think end of day one there was about seven cars within 10 seconds, so it's a very tight class, but we pushed on today and managed to consolidate second. Christian's doing a great job keeping us on the black stuff, so all is going well. Making a welcome return to the field were Woodman and Tao, having crashed out of the lead on the previous day. We started Mount Roland and we got around probably four or five corners and the car just cut out. So we sort of pulled over, turned the car off, turned it back on, it started again. It took off and I was making up time, but yeah, just cooked it into a six and it's pretty ugly. Awesome team last night and we were up till midnight fixing it. The spirit of Targa lives on. Everyone's welcomed us back in the event and looking forward to tomorrow. The rookie rally field saw plenty of action. John and Barry Swan led the rookie early modern field from Adam Gosling and Ian Noble and Lee Ford and Nicholas Brown. In rookie GT, Jesse Medwin and Zach Brakey and Anthony Moss and Julie Hunter held podium positions, with Jeff Morton and Steve Fisher maintaining a narrow 27 second lead in their Lotus. The fourth day of Target Tasmania 2018 is the event's longest and most gruelling, with crews facing a massive 440 kilometre challenge as they head from Launceston to Strawn. The day commenced with a legendary Sathana stage, the 38 hallowed kilometres proving to be a dream for some and a nightmare for others, including the rookie early modern leading Porsche 944 of John and Barry Swan. A spectator favourite is the Rihanna stage, with a right-hand junction midway through that never fails in delivering the action spectators come looking for. I remember a young girl saying she was, this is the most boring one I've seen, and next thing Peter Brock came through her hero. I've seen him get down that track down there. Spectators were rewarded for their efforts in 2018, with Dave Heaton and Caleb Ash providing the best entertainment. The competition in GT2 remained as tight as ever between the Whites and Close and Reeves. The pair taking three stage wins apiece. The Porsche owned the morning stages. However, it was the Viper that took charge on Rihanna and Helia Gorge, ending the day with a 37 second advantage. It's been a great day of competition. Just had a look at the, the rubber and I think we're better placed than what we thought we were for the pace that we carried through the day. So we'll see how the rest of it pans out. Three apiece on stage wins. Uh, unfortunately, Jason won by a bit more on the ones that he won. We had a bit of a dip on that last one because everyone was pretty unclear what the base was. And I think we took three seconds out of Jason. So look, if we get up on it, we still pull back time. Whether not, we can do 37 seconds. It just remains to be seen. Struggling with car issues, Glennie and Sarandis dropped back from the leading pair, but maintained their GT4 lead over Ken Arden Wheeler. However, all eyes were glued to the battle for third, with Paul Dowie and Bernie Webb's Audi TTRS now a mere 31 seconds behind the Balcom Foster GTR. In the rookie rally, the battle between Morton's Lotus and the Mitsubishi Evo 10 of Anthony Moss and Julie Hunter came to a premature end in Helia Gorge. We were as high as 14th outright today, so we're having a great run. Just felt a noise in the diff at the end of the, the first long stage today, and we thought it might have been close to terminal, and it looks like it is, so it's, that's motor racing. We've had a great time. It's yeah. been our first Targa, and we can't wait to come back again and hopefully make it through this time. Mitchell and Sutcliffe maintain their position ahead of the early modern field. In GT Sports Trophy, the battle for the final place on the podium intensified, with the Glyas Renault, Beeble GTR, and Pisco and Petullo's Audi all joining the mix. Downing and Weber continued to push hard, but it was the Dersma Wadhams Lotus that had extended its lead to over two minutes by the time the field arrived in Strawn. We had a really good day and we're pulling 20, 30 seconds on some of the stages on number two, so we're very happy with today's effort. Yeah, Marty's been driving really well. We've still two days to go, but we're in the right place. Stunning weather for the fifth day of Targa Tasmania heralded the possibility of an uncharacteristically dry run between Strawn and Hobart. The event's preeminent stage, Mount Arrowsmith, is one that every crew approaches with respect. The 52 kilometres providing no respite for the unwary. Heading into the day on a mission, Close and Reeves aim to reduce the gap between their Porsche and the White's Viper. After matching each other on the first three stages, Taralia proved decisive. The gap closing to less than 30 seconds, setting up an enthralling final day battle. 
behind. The Lotus of Paul Stokel and Aaron Kelly had a strong day in their pursuit of third placed Mike Pritchard and Gary Morant. The Porsche, however, limited the damage. Stokel heading into the final day, nearly 30 seconds adrift. Paul Stokel in the Lotus really stepped it up today and pushed pretty hard on, on Storm. We made some wing changes after Queenstown to just settle the car. The rest of the day, we're well and truly within the top three, so I'm pretty happy. Well, we came out of Storm pretty hot, but then Queenstown suits this car, obviously fairly tight, twisty, and uh, we narrowly missed getting the quickest time up there, which was disappointing. Glennie and Sarandis maintained their GT4 lead ahead of Kennard and Wheeler. The battle for the final spot on the podium promised to be intense, but the GTR of Balcom and Foster took on the scenery in the first stage, moving Dowie and Webb up to third. Had a great day today. It was our best day so far. Everything's starting to really gel together. We've still got a day to go, so even though we're in Hobart, can't relax yet. In GT Sports Trophy, Pisco and Petullo were the big movers, ending the day with their TTRS in third. Despite the best efforts of Downing and Webber, the Dersma Wadhams Lotus heads into the final day with a strong category lead. Early Modern was receiving plenty of attention as the Howarth GTR, Lily Manevo and Kaplan Penny M3 all traded times at the top of the leaderboard. The BMW pair won four of the day's six stages, but the Mitchell Sutcliffe Subaru continues to lead despite a sleepless night in Strawn. We had fourth gear in the gearbox let go um, late yesterday afternoon and we had to get a gearbox in last night and we didn't have one, but Buckby's was able to get one from Launceston and bring it to Strawn. We was up to about 4.30 putting that in, so we didn't get too much sleep. We tired today and time suffered a little bit because of that I believe but we made it and everything's safe and happy and yeah looking forward to tomorrow. As dawn broke on the final day of Target Tasmania 2018, competitors woke to tackle six challenging stages south of Hobart. For some, the day was about consolidating position. However, for others, it represented the last opportunity to make a charge for the podium. Without right honours on the line, Close and Reeves aimed their Porsche for glory, blasting into the day's opener. The Viper pairing knew the battle was on, and they launched into the bumpy tinderbox stage at maximum attack, unaware of what had occurred ahead. We were obviously planning to push on a bit, and the front end pushed, and I uh, just couldn't catch it, so the final victim have been a bit too competitive, but um, look, we've got to just thank all our supporters, Porsche and the Skid area, Auto Art, and we, we put up a good fight. Disappointing would be an understatement. The early modern battle was hard fought to the end. While running third, Kaplan and Penny crashed out of contention, handing the Lillimans their second successive third place. A strong day for the second placed Howarth GTR wasn't enough to overthrow John Mitchell and Josh Sutcliffe, who held on to complete their transition from kids watching Targa on the sideline to category victors, a process they've managed in just four events. A lot of people ask how long you've been doing this stuff for and we, we always say, oh, we've been mentally preparing for 15 to 20 years. We live this sport, it's all we've ever wanted to do, put in a huge amount of effort. Certainly didn't expect it to go this way, but we're very, very grateful and happy that it has. Everything went well today. Got it home, kept our gap, and fantastic day on the roads. Now we've done six now, finished three on the podium, great. We were second a kilometre faster than we were last year and uh, we brought out the big guns and everyone else did as well, so it's been a really good challenge trying to keep up with everyone. It's brilliant, especially doing it with your son, boys getting better every year. In GT Sports Trophy, Pisco and Petullo held on to their podium placing, as did Downing and Weber. But it was Martin Dersma and Richard Wadhams who continued a faultless performance to win the category. Fantastic day. Um, we had a little bit of lead coming in, but have to admit the last two stages was just pretty nerve-wracking. We've been working on this for four years now, so we had a great time. We just took it really easy. Our plan was just to not bin it. It's been a really good way to come second. A couple of very good drivers in our field is, is a really good result. The Audi TTRS is just a weapon of a car, and with the Dunlop tyre, was just fantastic. The rookie rally competitors were amongst the most excited when crossing the finish line in Hobart. Adam Gosling and Ian Noble were victorious in rookie early modern, with Colin O'Brien and Reese Llewellyn and Lee Ford and Nicholas Brown rounding out the podium. Matthew Gibbons and Tim Jurd held on to their podium position in rookie GT, along with Jesse Medwin and Zach Brakey. But the inspirational victory was claimed by Jeff Morton and Steve Fisher. This has always been a bucket list and to finish on top of the podium in the rookies, pretty special. Just feel so blessed to be here as a brain cancer survivor and this year with the Cure Brain Cancer Foundation. There's a lot of other people out there who have had brain cancer and um, aren't as fortunate as I am, so I just hope that I can inspire some of those people not to give up on their dreams. 
In GT4, third place Dowie and Webb, and second place Kennard and Wheeler consolidated their positions, leaving Steve Glennie and Andy Sarandis to take a commanding victory. Also extending their CAMS Australian Target Championship lead by finishing second outright. We're up against Vipers and GT3 RS Porsches, so for a little Subie to mix it with those guys is credit to the Buckby boys for presenting such a fantastic car for us. Fantastic roads and love the event. I learned a lot this week and it's just been a great experience to ride along in the car with Steve and go flat out everywhere basically. To get to the end of this event, it's so long, six days and 500 competitive kilometres, just to achieve that is, is an achievement in itself. But yeah, I think we did really well this week. We worked really well as a team. We've achieved everything we set out to do and we're very, very, very happy. We haven't had one moment all week just, just putting wheels in the right spot every time. It's, it's really been an honour to be in the car with him. Achieved both our outright goal from the start of the event and obviously a podium, so we're looking forward to next already. The battle for the final GT2 places was hard fought, with Alan Rowe and Michael Lloyd narrowly taking fifth spot. The Viper of John Ireland and Janet Binns comfortably finished fourth after a strong showing. Despite pushing hard on the final stages, Stokel and Kelly couldn't deny Pritchard and Morant their third consecutive second place in GT2. Following Close and Reeves' retirement, Jason and John White cruised through the remaining stages to take the overall and GT2 wins. The outright victory their seventh at Target Tasmania. Rising the occasion is what it's all about and the show that Matt put on from the get-go was hard to compete with so it was nice to bring ourselves up to that level and it's something that we're proud of. It has been a fair old journey for us. You take one stage after another and just keep going and going and going and never give up. We kept getting quicker and quicker and more used to the car and oh, it's a bit sad to finish it really. I'd like to go around again. We've had a brilliant week and got to be happy just to finish in one piece, let alone be on the podium. Bit of surprise really, we sort of started the day in no man's land, but we picked up another spot, had a good day and yeah, wrapped. For our first event together, we've certainly gelled and done really well, so super happy. As the victors celebrated, it was time for a chapter in Targa's history to close. It's time for me to say farewell. With eight-time winning co-driver Barry Oliver announcing at the Targa Gala dinner his retirement from competing alongside Jim Richards. As Targa Tasmania 2018 wrapped up, it was time for the largest podium in the world of motorsport. We'll be back with the third round of the CAMS Australian Targa Championship. The all-new Targa Great Barrier Reef.